More than likely, there's gonna come a point of time in Rise of P where you're gonna need to farm some Ergo. For me, that was somewhere between the 30th and 50th time that I was killed by the King of Puppets. Fortunately, I think I found the best early game Ergo farm, so let's break it all down. To get started, when I talk about early game, I mean pre-chapter 7, and with the exception of one accessory that I would consider optional, which you get in chapter 7, all of this can be acquired pre-chapter 6. So this is about as early game as you get. So let's break this down into four different sections. First, we'll talk about how we can maximize the amount of ergo we collect. Next, we'll look at the best farming route to take. Third, we'll look for ways we can increase quickness and efficiency. And finally, I've got a bit of a bonus tip that'll help you squeeze out even more ergo. So let's start by talking about how we can maximize the amount of ergo we collect. With absolutely no upgrades or amulets at all, we'll get 54 ergo when we kill this puppet. But once we've unlocked the ability to upgrade our P organ, we'll gain access to the increased ergo level 1 skill in phase 1 and increased ergo level 2 skill in phase 3. Each of these skills gives us an increase in ergo of just under 10%, giving us about a 20% increase once we have them both unlocked. And when upgrading your P organ, it's important to know that you don't need to upgrade the main skill in order to get access to the secondary skill. So you only need 9 quarts to unlock both level 1 and 2, which you should have by the time you get to chapter 6. Another great thing about this is with the recent 1.2 patch, you can now respec your P-Organ as soon as you gain access to the gold fruit tree in chapter 5. So you don't need to worry about wasting quartz on skills you don't necessarily need all the time. Once you're done with your farm, you can just run back to the gold fruit tree and respec your P-Organ. Now another accessory we want to make sure to get is the Hunter's Amulet that we get in Chapter 7 by searching Lorenzini's Arcade. Now I wouldn't consider this accessory a requirement, so if you don't yet have it, you can still use the other skills to maximize the amount of ergo you're collecting. But if you do have the Hunter's Amulet, it gives us about an 8% increase in the amount of ergo we're able to collect. So you'll see that once we have the Hunter's Amulet equipped and the increased ergo skills level 1 and 2 unlocked, we're now able to get 69 ergo from killing this puppet which is about a 28% increase. Now that might not seem like all that much, so let's find a different route that'll give us more puppets that we can kill for more ergo to collect. And the best one that I found is the Workshop Union Entrance, which you get in Chapter 3. And there's a bit of a good, better, and best path that we can take here, so let's explore each one. When you teleport to the Stargazer, you'll find two puppets immediately in this room. We can easily take these puppets out, and with the ergo maximizing tips from before, we can get a quick 294 ergo. This is a good path, but a better path is to run past the Stargazer, down the hall, and around the corner, where you'll find two more puppets that are easy to kill. If you're able to lure these two puppets out and avoid the big puppet, you can easily get another 300 ergo. But the absolute best path, in my opinion, is to go ahead and kill the big puppet. Now there is some risk here, but once you've done it a couple times, you'll get his timing down and you'll find that he's really not all that hard to kill and doing so will get you an extra 450 ergo. Round trip, you can expect to collect about 1000 ergo, and this whole process will only take you about a minute or even less once you've gotten the hang of it. Now to make things even easier, there's a couple of things that we can do to maximize our quickness and efficiency. First, we can equip the Puppet Destroyer's Amulet, which increases damage inflicted on puppets. This will ensure that we can kill the puppets even easier. And definitely be sure to use the Electric Coil Stickhead, because puppets are weak to shock, so this will make quick work of them. Next, I like to have my Legion Arm set to Puppet String and have it upgraded to the Trace skill. This makes it even easier to lure the puppets out so you can just fight them one-on-one. -on -one. And with the Trace skill, you can quickly close the gap on the big puppet and get in a really good hit from the start. Finally, be sure to use the Moon Phase Pocket Watch, which you get at the beginning of the game. With this, you can just teleport back to the Workshop Union Entrance Stargazer so you don't even have to run back and start the process all over again. So here's me running through the full process with everything equipped from beginning to end. All right, let's see how fast we can do this. We want to run into this room, use the puppet string, pull him out of there, dead. Come up to this next guy, make quick work of him. Well, not so quick work. Make sure we're getting all these shinies here. Run around the corner. Use the puppet string. This is where I really like to use the puppet string because uh, you can just pull these guys right out of there and you don't have to get that big puppet all angry yet. And then pull him out of there. And with the shock weapon and the puppet's amulet, we can take care of these guys no problem. And then I'll use the trace skill on the puppet string to 
zipline myself over there. And once you've killed this guy like 50 times like I have, you'll have a pretty good idea of how to beat him. Uh, it doesn't really take all that long. And we are able to do that in record time. And then we want to use the amulet to go back to the stargazer from the beginning. So we don't even have to run back. We can just teleport there. Uh, and we're able to do that in less than a minute. And now here's my bonus tip for being able to get even more ergo, and it's one of the reasons why I like this path so much. These puppets have an incredibly high drop rate for different items. Not only do they regularly drop dim ergo fragments, which will give you an additional 100 ergo, but occasionally you'll also get vivid ergo fragments, which give you an extra 300 ergo. The big puppet will also regularly drop star fragments, which you can use to summon specters for boss fights, as well as hidden moonstones, which you can use to upgrade weapons. After about an hour of farming this route, this is all the loot I was able to collect. And after turning around and selling that to Paul and Dina back at Hotel Krat, I was able to get an additional 4,000 ergo. So after about an hour of running this route, I imagine you could easily get about 70,000 ergo, and you'd basically have an unlimited number of star fragments and hidden moonstones. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, feel free to let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for even more Lies of P content. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.